In the late 1950s and early 1960s, the United States grew increasingly scared that their means of radio communication would be taken out by a solar flare or perhaps by the Soviet Union. Fearing this day that never came, scientists set out on a mission to strengthen the Earth's ionosphere, the region of the Earth's atmosphere that heavily influences radio wave propagation across the planet. The solution, devised by the United States, was absolutely absurd. More absurd, however, is the fact that they actually set the plan in place. In the summer of 1963, the United States placed a gigantic ring of thin copper wire around the Earth. It was part of a project known as West Ford. These wires, referred to as needles, were an attempt to add a conductive layer around the Earth that would allow for seamless radio wave transmission regardless of conditions in the ionosphere. You see, in the 1950s, most communication was transferred through undersea cables, or electromagnetic waves were bounced off of the Earth's natural ionosphere layer. The ionosphere could be interrupted by solar flares or other possible human interventions, which made it not as reliable as the US government wanted at the time. A pioneering electrical engineer named Walter E. Morrow at MIT's Lincoln Laboratory devised this ingenious plan to place a belt of copper wire around the Earth. These wires would serve as permanent radio reflectors, which would circumvent the common problems with the ionosphere and protect communications from solar flares. 480 million thin copper needles were manufactured and prepared to launch into space. Each needle was 1.8 centimeters long and was less than the width of a human hair. The length of 1.8 centimeters corresponded to half the wavelength of an 8 gigahertz microwave, which would turn every needle into a dipole antenna. It was expected that the needles would orbit in a layer 3,500 kilometers above Earth. The first launch of the needles occurred on October 1961 and ended in failure. The large number of needles launched into space didn't end up dispersing. Rather, they just clumped together, becoming utterly useless for the project and leaving space with a lot more junk. Even with this massive failure, the project continued on until success on May 9, 1963. The West Ford launch placed 120 to 215 million copper needles in a belt around the Earth in polar orbit. Within a few days, voice transmissions were sent using the needles between California and Massachusetts. Initial data speeds were 20 kilobits per second, which was a decent speed at the time. However, for comparison, this is nearly 5,000 times slower than high-speed internet today. Data speeds quickly dropped as the needles moved, and four months later, the transmission was down to only 100 bits per second, a reduction of 200 times over the original test. The project was eventually shelved months later as satellite technology continued to solve the problem much more effectively. More than 50 years later, the Earth is still surrounded by millions of tiny copper needles, just remnants of this project. Many needles started the journey back to Earth and, due to their small size, didn't burn up in the atmosphere. So they now rest in layers of snow at the poles of the Earth. The U.S. succeeded in giving the Earth a ring of copper, but it failed in turning this copper ring into a long-term viable means of communication. However, it did work and it did get implemented, showing that with a little luck and perhaps millions of dollars in U.S. funding, no idea is too crazy.